hi guys uh, how are you all doing so today's topic is imaging of pancreatic masses um, as you know we are doing gi system currently so yeah this is a topic which uh, comes as a short case right it's uh, it's not usually a long case but it's uh, a short case that can be asked apart from that you get a long question here from uh, uh, resectability of of adenosis so that is what my main focus will be apart from that you also get notes uh, long question notes on cystic and neuroendocrine tumors of pancreas it's a topic which is more theoretical because uh, these lesions are not very very common you know actually 95% of the cases will be adenocarcinomas that you will see in your uh, in your practice but somehow for exams what is more important are the cystic and neuroendocrine tumors you know so so for for uh, uh, exam purposes we have to pay attention to the latter part of the talk but for real life it will be the first part of the talk which will be on adenocarcinomas all right so that's how it's been planned just give me one second. Yeah. Audio is fine. All right. Okay. Let's start then. Okay. Yeah. All right. Perfect. So let's briefly talk about the anatomy. It's something that is important for from ultrasound and, and you know, uh, CT point of view, you should know the cross-sectional anatomy. So for the first years, mainly just to give you an orientation, this is the transverse view of the pancreas as you are all uh, aware of. So if I ask you, uh, what is this part? This is kind of easy. Head, neck, body or tail. Which out of the four is this? Yeah, so this obviously is the head. What must be this? Neck or body? And how will you say whether it is neck or body? Just because head comes after neck, it is neck? Or how do I know what is the neck? What is the anatomical landmark that you will say? To call something as the head of pancreas, to call something neck of pancreas and to call something body of pancreas. What is the landmark? The landmark is this structure. So tell me what is this structure here? Is it the SMB or is it the confluence, the splenoportal confluence? So the confluence here is where this structure, this is the splenic vein, right? So you know splenic vein runs on the posterior aspect of the body of pancreas. So what you see here, yeah, this structure here is the splenic vein. Where is the splenic artery? <coughs> what is this? Is this the splenic vein becoming tortuous? But they have kind of different echogenicity. So can't be the splenic vein. What is this? Yeah, this is the splenic this is the SMA, is it? SMA at this level or at the tail of pancreas? This must be the splenic artery, isn't it? Yeah. So splenic artery also runs behind the pancreas, but it runs more superiorly. So it lies on the superior pole of the pancreas. Only when it's very tortuous will you see it like this coming into the view. All right. Otherwise, it runs posteriorly and superiorly. So you never tend to see it, you know, through this uh, plane. Did you guys understand? So the only echogenic structure that an echoic structure that runs behind the pancreas will be the splenic vein. So wherever I see the splenic vein merging with the SMV coming from below and forming the portal vein confluence, splenoportal confluence, that is called the neck. What lies anterior to it is the neck. What lies right to it is the head and what lies left to it is the body. So my next question to you is what is body and what is tail? Where, where does the body become tail? What is the anatomical landmark for body and tail? This is something that I have seen a lot of students uh, mistake and not know. Anybody can tell me ki kaha pe tail ban jayega? What is the landmark? Can't be splenic artery. Can't be splenic vein. What is it that I see? Is it aorta? Is it IVC? Is it vertebra? Kya dekh sakte hai? Is it liver? What do I see? I can see liver, I can see aorta, IVC, vertebra. Kya use kare? Okay, aorta is a good guess. So basically, it's the vertebra, all right? So it's the lateral border of the vertebra. Can you see this is the vertebral body? So the lateral border of vertebral body is where the body, all right, sorry. It's where the 
body of the pancreas becomes the tail. All right, so that is what you need to remember. Where is the uncinate process? Uncinate process is inferior. So where I see the SMA and SMV, as we remembered last time, SMA will be on the left, SMV will be on the right. So I don't have that plane here, but I'll show you in the course of the class. If this is SMA and SMV, the part of pancreas that is running below it is the uncinate process. So I never see uncinate process with the other parts. All right. So that's never a confuser for me. Are you guys understanding? So part of pancreas is clear. Similarly on the CT, same thing. So what you are seeing now, whatever I'm labeling, can you just identify what is this? Yeah. Especially first years, you guys should understand the anatomy. This is the splenic vein. This is the splenopotal confluence. So this is what is the head. This is the neck. This is the body. And then I draw a line through the lateral part. So this becomes the tail of pancreas. Yes, is this clear to everyone? This becomes the aorta. This is the origin of the celiac axis. And this is the IVC. All right. So this is our cross-sectional anatomy. Why is this very important? Why is it so important for the surgeon? And for us to exactly tell the surgeon ki mass neck mein hai, head mein hai, uncinate mein hai ya body mein hai. Why is it so important? Because they are going to decide the course of the surgery based on this, isn't it? So if you have a, let's say this is the pancreas, yeah, kind of looks like this. Not the best drawing, but yeah, let's say this is the total pancreas. Yeah, so this is the uncinate process. This is head, neck, body and tail. And this is where I have the splenic artery and splenic vein running. Now, yes, different surgery. So whatever is medial to this part, basically whatever is to the right of the splenic, uh, right to the SMV, SMA and the splenoportal confluence is going to be operated by a whip or a modified whipples and whatever is to the left of this can be it's a good thing it can be operated just by a distal pancreatectomy all right so that's why it's very important for us to say whether it is in one of these three or it's in the body and tail and then it can be a, a lesser uh, severe and a lesser extensive surgery which is the distal pancreatectomy all right did you guys understand this so this is the significance of the anatomy here now, how will the patient present? So here in pancreas, actually the age is going to be so distinctive that when you see the age only, you, know, you kind of make a diagnosis in your mind. Whipples is long mire? No, no, no. Long mire procedure is the one that chronic pancreatitis. Mein karta hai. It's a duct anastomosis, right? That they do in chronic pancreatitis. Whipples is pan everything, you know, that you remove. It's it's. Basically, you spare the pylorus. So, it's called pylorus preserving pancreatico duodenectomy. So, they will remove the duodenum. They will remove the pancreas. And what they'll do is they'll do a anastomosis, hepatico jejunostomy, duodeno jejunostomy, and whatever is the tail which is left, they'll do a pancreatico jejunostomy. So, that is what is done. All right. That is what is Whipple's. Okay, yeah. So coming to the age. So age is what is very, very typical here. So what you see in elderly is obviously adenosia, which is the most common mass of the pancreas. In younger group of patients, we tend to expect neuroendocrine tumors. In addition to neuroendocrine tumors, what's a very, very typical tumor is spen. How many of you know what a spen is? What is a spen? It has multiple names, but all sound very similar. Pseudo papillary right so it's called as a pseudo papillary epithelial neoplasm it's called as a solid papillary epithelial neoplasm nowadays they say it's a solid papillary tumor so all of these names basically you remember spen or spt that should be enough all right so we will look at all of these middle age patient here then think of a cystic neoplasm then we'll be discussing the various cystic neoplasm and one cystic neoplasm that can be seen in elderly females grandmother lesion is cystic is a serous cystic neoplasm right so serous cystic uh, adenoma is typically seen in elderly population so the age helps you a lot here when we talk about adenocea the most common presentation is a pain lump if it's in the head of the pancreas you may have jaundice but usually lesions in the body and tail present late and that's why pancreatic ca has the word